the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Please, I'd like us to honor Reverend Godwin Abba and his wonderful wife. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so, so much. Such a powerful, energetic, faith-filled church. Good evening, everybody. Amen and amen. It remains an honor to serve this church and indeed the body of Christ with the word of the Lord. Um, I don't take it lightly. It is with every sense of responsibility and gratitude that I want to appreciate you, sir, and your dear wife. Thank you for the honor. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Hallelujah. I believe that the sessions passed with Reverend Ntia have been very transforming sessions. Hallelujah. And um, the Lord will grant us great grace as we utilize these sessions to move us forward your pastor said something very instructive just before inviting me up and i thought that was not a statement to allow just breeze over and he said when you meet with god that he will make you it is true it is true that god is able to make men hallelujah and conferences like this are designed with an intention to help men experience God in higher levels, higher dimensions. And there are a number of things that should happen in every gathering and more so in a conference like this. Number one is that people must encounter God. There has to be a platform that allows for encounters. Number two, people must be transformed by the power of the word. God's word is his instrument of transformation. Transformation is the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. Hallelujah. Number three, there must be an allowance for the ministry of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. We must allow God reveal himself through signs and wonders and miracles. Signs and wonders are expressions of the love of God, but they are also expressions of his power. And then number four, there must be a platform for impartations. An impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. Every time God anoints Jacob, he intends for that grace to reach Israel. He never anoints a man just for himself. He only anoints that man to be the starting point that initiates that experience across the body. Praise the Lord. So whilst we are gathered like this, it is important that we expect that even whilst the word of God is coming, there will be a transference of grace. You know by now through the so powerful teaching ministry of your pastor that our possibilities in this kingdom is not only dependent on the love of God nor the will of God, but on the level and the dimension of grace that is operating in your life. It is true. This is why grace and peace can be multiplied. So when God brings and calls for a convergence like this, it is also an opportunity to drink of several graces that now empower us to be effective as far as the advancement of the kingdom is concerned and then actualizing our destinies. And finally, there must be a platform for fellowship. The Bible says, Psalm 133, Behold how good and pleasant it is, it says, When brethren dwell together in unity, he likens it to the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron the priest that comes down to his bed, to his skirt. The Bible says, for there, in that unity, not that house, 
that state of unity the lord had commanded the blessing are you ready to pray father open our eyes tonight in the name of jesus take us to higher levels please pray please pray such powerful moments already the worship the praise the mistrels that have come they have prepared our spirits to receive I like us to pray Shalakata brandega de balagetia Prayer is part of the meeting please pray Shalada balakata brandega de baladabo Elimanagada Ela praska de balakata brandega de baladabo Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Just one more prayer. I'd like you to pray and declare that forcefully, by the power of God's word, you are making intentional advancement in your life. I want you to mean it with all your heart. Listen, psychologically speaking, one of the indices for fulfillment is progress you only become fulfilled to the extent to which you perceive that you are making progress is that true this is why stagnation is demonic how do you know you are suffering stagnation when only your age is growing if your age is the only thing growing in your life something is wrong the bible says and jesus grew luke chapter 2 and verse 52 in wisdom in stature in favor with God and with men is someone ready to pray and declare that in this conference you are making progress be intentional about your prayer please lift your voice and pray Skada balenta prakatos kada balaka tabrende de balaka pa. Shine balakete parusa sege baratash kada brandi ge de bara. Skela parus kada balenta ke parasia. You are praying. Let the weight of your glory. Cover us. Let the life of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom let it reign in us. Let the weight of your glory flow. Let the weight I'm under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings Your influence is all over me to higher levels oh god this is why we are gathered higher levels of perception higher levels of power higher levels of grace higher levels of spiritual illumination the grace that can break open closed gates and release that dimension of grace and glory that is upon our lives this we obtain tonight hallelujah we desire to see him through his word because the bible says it is only as we behold him we are not changed when he is around we are changed when we see him to 
see you high and lifted up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. We'll see you high and lifted up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Please lay your hands on your head in one minute and pray. My mind be open. My spirit be open. My eyes be open. Someone is praying. Shilakaruska de branding in the brand again. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. May God bless you. Please be seated. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. We'll begin today and then we'll take it tomorrow and as God will grant us grace. I love the word of God because it sustains the power to truly bless and to lift. Romans 15 and verse 4. The Bible says, For whatsoever things... The word of God is coming now. Whatsoever things were written aforetime, it says they were written for our learning. Not just for our knowledge, they were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scripture, we might have hope. What hope? Hope that the God that did it to them is able to do it again. So the Bible tells us that the things that were written aforetime, every story, every parable captured in scripture, there is an intent to it. The Bible says it was written for our learning. So every time we study scripture, God expects that we will learn. What do we learn? We learn the character of God. What do we learn? We learn the ways of God. What the Bible calls the mysteries of the kingdom. This is a conference essentially scripture contains three basic things number one scripture contains promises in scripture we find the promises god's bond god's commitment promises define the boundaries of god's bond and commitment to man number two in scripture we find principles what the bible calls the ways of god his modus operandi, his methodologies, God's strategy for achieving results. Are we together now? So when we study scripture, he shows us, scripture shows us a road map that leads from desires to manifestations. So I am able to study from scripture how to obtain Hebrews 11 gives us an archive of those who use these truths to obtain results. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. He calls it the evidence of things not seen. It says, for by it, elders obtained principles. The principles of God are a representation of his system of justice. So that whoever can find them, regardless background, regardless gender, regardless the disadvantage before that time, once you find it, the Bible says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. I'm giving a background to my session. It's important that we appreciate the ministry of the word for these reasons, that the word of God, scripture, contains promises. Number two, it contains principles. We can study the word of God and learn not only the character of God, we can learn the way he operates. So we gain mastery in this kingdom by an accurate understanding of the ways of God. This is what builds up into what we call dominion. Dominion happens to the degree to which we comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom. 
Number three, we find in scripture prophecy. Prophecies are captured in scripture. He does not leave us in limbo as to the future. He wants believers to understand their destiny, both short term and long term. And we find the entire scope of a believer's journey, past, present, and future in scripture. Because if our hope is only in this life, the Bible declares that we are of all men most miserable. So scripture contains prophecy. It lets us know what is going to happen to us after now so that it does not leave us in fear because the character of love is that it casts out fear. And if God should leave us in the dark without knowing what the future holds, we will walk in fear. And fear has the capacity to keep men in bondage. If it is true that God is love, then there should not be fear around him. So everything that makes for the exiting of fear in the believer's life, uncertainty brings fear. This is why faith is the cure for fear. Our persuasion that even though I am not there, I can rest my faith on a God who is Alpha Omega, not and Omega, Alpha Omega. He is not the beginning and the end. He is both the beginning and at the same time. He doesn't have to walk from the beginning to leave the end. He can still be in the beginning while at the end. So there's no such thing as God, what, you know, as though he needs to leave the beginning to quickly peep into the future. His realm does not have past, does not have present, does not have future. His realm is not even eternity. God's realm is called now. That's his realm. Everything is bare before him. Are we together? So when we study scripture, listen carefully. Why am I saying this? This is a conference and sadly because God is helping to build the body of Christ we must help believers understand the importance of scripture the Bible scripture is God's recommended pathway to knowing him and understanding his ways scripture is not the only way we know the realm of the spirit we can route through other sources and other channels but the Bible leaves us with a disclaimer that if you follow any other way outside of scripture there is a side effect to your experience there will be a side effect to your experience. When Jesus came, he said, I am the way. The way means the authorized channel. I lead you to the truth, reality. That reality ministers life to you. He says, no man comes to the Father. That means I am also a bridge. You never experience the Father except through me. I am the administrator of eternal life. Apostle John was speaking and he says, this is the record that God had given us eternal life. He said, but he structured the administration of that life such that you must encounter the son before you have that life. Are we together? So do not frown at any time you have to sit to learn scripture. Learning scripture is, an, is a way of deliverance, deliverance from ignorance. The Bible says, true knowledge shall the just be delivered. Now that God has given your conference such a powerful title, we have to explore through scripture. The only way we open gates or bring them down, the only way we possess our possession, the only way we advance in this scripture is to go to this manual and find out God's way of doing it. Mastery in this kingdom happens when we understand the secrets that are behind stories not the stories themselves a story in scripture never benefits you until the mystery behind it is unraveled this is how we excel are we together now so we explore scripture and we find there god's ways how do we bring down gates how do we bring down mountains is it unusual for a man to be in an experience where there are all kinds of gates and instruments of resistance scripture is that lecturer that enlightens us brings us into the place of knowledge i commend you to god he says and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified are we blessed having established this i like us to look at the book of joshua through my session 
the book of Joshua is a very interesting book in the Bible not only because I'm named after that book but then <laughs> hallelujah it is a very interesting book because it is one of the books in the Bible that shows the valiancy of faith it shows how God is able to pick a man and guide that man and scatter through that book are mysteries the book is very open to show us what happens when we walk in keeping with God's ways and it is also open to show us that just because you won yesterday does not mean you win tomorrow you only win to the degree to which you walk in keeping with the truths that make for victory are we blessed so Joshua chapter 6 please and then we'll back up to chapter 5 and then I'll just pick one thing for tonight we'll share and we'll pray are we still together Joshua chapter 6 let's start from verse 1 we'll read with King James and then if there's any other version if that is possible if we can look at it after we read with King James maybe amplified or NIT I want you to see something there that would be the basis for my teaching proper tonight the Bible says now Jericho was strictly shut up it was closed why because of the children of Israel there was a reason why it was closed as a result nothing went in and nothing went out is there any other version we can look at just verse 1 the Bible says now Jericho a fenced town with high walls was tightly closed because of the Israelites none went out or came in can we look at um, I wish we can see NIV beautiful no the scripture you just the version you just used now NLT thank you read with me everyone now the gates of Jericho were tightly because stop 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 don't rush we this is a conference there was a reason why the people shot that place the bible says these people had fear operating in them so even though they had creativity before and they could build such a wall fear paralyzed them in a moment and for the fear of israelites they shot that place that was once a beauty to neighboring nations the Bible says five chariots could stand on the wall what kind of a wall is that imagine a wall where five chariots could stand on if you collapse it it is still a wall now the question is what kind of motivation was given to those people to be able to build such a formidable structure are we together now once upon a time they came to that place they advanced to that region and the bible says they were able to build this formidable structure with strong gates and towers if you read i wish we had time you will see the security architecture of jericho pastor the security architecture of Jericho was second to none. The nation of Israel, even though a covenant people, they sneaked in and went to Rahab. In a moment, the news had gotten to the king that some people came. Their location was picked with accuracy. What sort of a city is this? Follow me carefully. Don't trivialize Jericho. I know it was destroyed, but let's learn something from it first. They sent somebody. He came to Jericho. They sneaked in and met a harlot. And there was such an intelligent system in Jericho. With precision, the king had received the news. Some men came from Israel. They came to spy. How was their motive discerned? And then they met Rahab. She had to coin a story. And he said, pursue them beyond the Jordan. And he opened the gates, they went and closed. Now, I'm, I'm trying to help you appreciate the fact that this city was not built by weak men. But one information entered their camp. And the moment that information entered their camp, progress died. 
a people who built such a fence a people who had such security architecture somebody introduced one information give us that scripture again now you will understand what you are reading now the gates what did they close help me what did they close the access that controlled their commerce the access that controlled their moving in and going out suffered not because the gate spoiled not because anything bad happened to it simply because of one factor was introduced they were afraid of the israelites the bible says as a result no one was allowed to go in no one was allowed to go out we're discussing gates we'll bring down jericho later but this night i want you to understand what can happen to a people how can a man be so powerful so saved so intelligent so creative with results to show and then just one information is introduced into the life of that man and he will prefer stagnation to advancement that a man prefers to remain the same let our economy suffer yes let our reputation go down yes remember they only heard they had not seen them it was just a rumor that is possible you may be liable to an attack and because of that every activity that makes for progress suffered everybody say fear shout it again this night we are dealing with some of the forces before we talk about these gates there seems to be something that fear is able to do to men listen carefully that even though it is an invisible enemy the presence and the devastating effect of it can be physical and you can relate with joshua chapter one when we start with that book now they were mourning moses please give it to us joshua chapter one the bible says now after the death of moses the servant of the lord it came to pass that the lord spake unto joshua the son of Nun, moses's minister saying moses my servant is dead now therefore arise go over prophesy to someone say go over one more time say go over the guy was sitting there in fear what do i do with a people so great how do i lead these people to a place of destiny please keep that scripture and god said my servant is dead now arise go over this jordan thou and all these people unto the land which i do give them even unto the children of israel verse 3 it says every place hallelujah that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that i have given unto you as i said unto moses someone shout amen, amen. from the wilderness and this lebanon even to the great river you know let me pause for a minute and let's celebrate god here look at god sharing land as if there are no enemies there you see when god talks to you he talks like he's talking to himself he does not talk like he's seen any limitation when you build that house give this one to this church and while he's saying that all you have in your account is five thousand naira and he will never talk about that limitation this is god allocating lands with giants and fierce people please sit down give us that scripture from the wilderness and this lebanon even unto the great river the river euphrates the land of the hittites the great sea towards the going down of the sun it shall be your coast and there shall no man be able to stand before you all the days of your life hold on this was the reason why he removed the sword when the angel appeared because of this word god you gave me a covenant who is this man who are you and the man had to answer he said no 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 are you for us or against us 
because a word was given to him that as I go I don't know what I will face but I know one thing that I'm victorious there is a word before me we are exploring scripture please leave that scripture and then it says verse 5 I will not fail you nor forsake you verse 6 be strong another word for be strong is fear not and be of good courage now that I've spoken to you about advancement there is something that is in men I want to take it out of you otherwise you will not make progress now that I have encouraged you I have shown you the allocations of your destiny there is something that is common to all men I need to go through a surgery with you if I do not remove it all this will remain as prophecy mountains will remain mountains prophecy will remain prophecy dreams will remain dreams visions will remain dreams visions it says be strong and of good courage for unto these people you shall divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them only thou be strong and very why would God emphasize such a thing he said mr. man I don't want to threaten you but there are things you are going to see on the way there are things you are going to hear on the way there are people you are going to see on the way do not mind Jeremiah chapter 1 please sit down Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 5 Jeremiah now we have seen how God was calling and preparing Joshua let's see what he did to little Jeremiah and before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, he says, before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained. To ordain means to commission. To ordain means to legitimize an operation. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. Are we together? Next verse. Then said I, the young boy is speaking now. Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak. Why? for I am a child I love the Lord he rebuked him immediately he says say not I am a child for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee and whatsoever I command thee thou shalt speak next verse do you see it here again there is something about great men that if a surgery does not happen to you you can have dreams and have visions but when you start that journey Without this spiritual surgery, you may not arrive. He told him, be not afraid. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver you, saith the Lord. Jericho, a land that is so that is it as an architectural masterpiece with such level of intelligence and security but as soon as fear was introduced into that system not even their creativity could function immediately everything paralyzed listen to me tonight in the name of Jesus in this place the Lord has sent me to perform this spiritual surgery and and crush the spirit of fear out of someone's life and out of someone's destiny that's why i told you don't worry we are coming to gates but this night there is a lesson we must learn please give us chapter 6 and verse 1 again nlt now the gates of jericho now the gates of creativity now the gates of advancement now the gates of progress suddenly became short because the people were afraid now the gates of higher levels of ministry now the gates of greater exploits in ministry now the gates of signs and wonders now the gates of the healing anointing now the gates of supernatural manifestations became short because in as much as you are anointed and blessed 
as you began to advance you heard that there is a spirit that can destroy men you heard that there is an influence that can come and interrupt your growth fear is dangerous was it not fear that stopped the crusades was it not fear that stopped the instruction from god go and lay hands on the sick what if i pray and nothing happens what if people record it and they put it online what if they record my failure when the days of social media what if i pray for that dead body and because of that the gate was shut nothing went out and nothing went in in one minute i'd like you to pray that every spirit of fear over my life Oh, please be serious over my destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come against you by the God of heaven. I come against you by the God of heaven. Following online, pray in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Hebrews chapter 2, please. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. We are learning from Apostle Paul. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. We can go back to King James now. Hebrews chapter 2. The Bible says, For as much then as children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death which is the devil verse 15 read with me please one to read and deliver them who through fear of death fear of anything leads to bondage fear of success fear of advancement please pay attention because there are many of you here in spite of the prophetic word that continues to come from the man of God over your life there are ministries locked up within your spirit there are mantles and anointings there are graces spiritual investments after the fasting after the prayer after the night vigil now it's time to advance and fear comes and shuts the gate nothing goes out nothing goes in listen to me the bible tells us in second timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 that fear is a spirit there is a psychology to fear but fear second timothy fear is a spirit second timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 for god had not given look up please that means if you ever find fear in your life you received it as a gift someone gave it but god is saying in that giving i am innocent i'm not the one who gave it listen carefully fear only comes to receive us it is not only money that comes to receive us we are dealing with giving and receiving here. Please give us that scripture. God had not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us power, love. Look at the tripartite forces that must exist for one spirit to live. Don't you downplay fear. That for a man to deal with fear, there has to be a revelation of power, there has to be a revelation of love there has to be a revelation of transformation god has not given us the spirit of fear fear is given it can be rejected it can be received this is very powerful The assignment of fear 
listen carefully the assignment of fear fear works like a prophetic word because when you become afraid you give power to what you are afraid of listen carefully the only way what you are afraid of can have power over you is to bring you to a psychological state where you are afraid fear is confidence in the object of the fear it is true it's not just a cliche it is true that when you manifest fear you are giving confidence to the object of the fear what is the purpose of fear to gain access to your imagination to gain access to your creativity to gain access to your expectations job chapter 3 and verse 25 job 3 25 job said for the thing which i greatly fear what happened to it is come upon me that means fear has magnetic properties fear can attract to your life what you are afraid of you are afraid of death you are afraid of accident you are afraid of plane crash you are afraid of failure you are afraid of this and that and job said this is a mystery that the thing that a man can greatly fear is the thing he attracts to his life the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. So when God begins to launch men, listen carefully, after giving them all the encouragement, he will tell them there is something I need to take out of you. It is not unusual in men to fear, but then when you begin to fear, you will never be able to do so much. Fear can impede the passion the force the zest to move forward because when god gives you instructions he will open up to you a destiny that only god can fulfill god cannot give you a destiny that men fulfill he will give you a destiny that only god can fulfill why because he's the one who will walk with you to make it happen please pay attention this night The purpose of fear is to gain access to your imagination. When you begin to think fear, the devil uses the sense realm and all the things that happen around you to plant fear in you. Can I tell you what fear does? Fear can deflate your hope. Fear can deflate your expectations. All of a sudden, the zest and the fire you have to move forward suddenly goes down if you will ever raise the dead in your life your first assignment is to have the courage to stand before one if you will ever buy a land in your life your first assignment is to have the courage to look at one land and say how much and they mention an amount you're almost falling down and you say no way mm -mm. listen carefully can i tell you this behind the exploits of champions is a revelation that has given them an indefinite immunity against fear champions are men but they are not ordinary men they are men who have received a spiritual vaccination against fear they have sustained the ability to defy fear they have mastered fear and they know how to conquer it and so they move from one level of triumph even to another you will never be able to bear glory i can imagine what happened to your wonderful man of god when god sent him here do you realize that once upon a time this facility was a flat ground yet your pastor was already sharing rooms on a bare ground 
let this one be an office when you see champions operate they look like madmen but there, there is an audacity that knowing god produces let me tell you believe what i'm telling you because if it's success you are looking for i wish i were lying i would have just told you i'm sorry there are serious giants and gates giants are not only metals there are people also who are gates when the bible says lift up your head O ye gates the gates were not metals they were people they spoke back they said who wants to enter we are not used to opening no can i tell you something oh david one day you will stand before goliath the key to the throne is in the pocket of goliath you must have the courage to bring him down to get to the throne we live in a world that is so risk averse so fearful full of prophecy full of fasting full of prayer but when it's time to move this is why many remain stagnated forever there are ceos today who are supposed to be feeding nations and blessing territories they remain with piles of prophecy one impartation one bottle of oil on their head after another and yet they do not move there are people who are supposed to be doing exploits in ministry not from a standpoint of flesh there are healing evangelists that are supposed to be packing stadiums and bringing glory to the name of the lord but because of fear there are books that are supposed to be blessing nations today if i write what is the guarantee we live in a world of guarantees i cannot move can you guarantee me learn how to drive give me a guarantee what if i have an accident i'm no longer a slave to fear i am the child of god that i'm no longer a slave to fear i am Sit down. Let me touch on something and we'll pray. Is God helping you tonight? Shake off that fear whilst you are sitting. You came for a conference. After this conference, we should hear testimonies that in one week you carried five years through courage and put it in that one week. You smash every gate before you. You open the gate of dearly beloved. I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kato kete branda kata bako tosko tobre kete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.